Welcome to a short training video on the use of the Allen Heath Q32. This is a digital desk, uh, which means that, among other things, it's got computing inside it, therefore you need to power it up and shut it down in the, first, in the correct way. So let's just start with that. Power switch is at the back by the mains lead. Uh, it's not too difficult to find. Press it in, it starts up. It will then come up, quickly boots up to the login screen. Uh, we have three logins on here. There's an admin user, which we use for initial setup. Uh, there's a standard user, which is the one we'll use most of the time. And finally, there's a basic user, uh, which we've set up just to have radio mics and a piano on for events such as uh, conferences or maybe uh, midweek funerals or something small like that. We're going to log in as standard user. So it's pre-selected at standard. Hit standard. Hit login. Type in the password. Confirms we've logged in, OK. To uh, power it off, you have to do the correct method of doing so. The rear for that is you hit the home screen, hit shutdown, continue shutdown, yes, and now you can turn it off at the back. OK, we're now going to give you a brief overview of how the desk is. Conceptually, a digital desk is very similar to an analogue desk in that you have uh, a, a load of individual channels. Each channel can have its own EQ, gain settings, and then you can send the output to a variety of places, including foldback and auxes. However, the difference with a digital desk is instead of having complete banks of all the controls for every uh, channel all duplicated across, you have uh, a couple of features to means that these are a bit easier to see. So the the first thing you're trying to show is you have a, what's called a super strip, super strip. And this is up here. And this contains all of the settings for the EQ and the channel processing. So this would be equivalent to the top end of an analog desk where you set your gains and you set your EQ. There's only one of those. So in order to select it for a given desk, uh, channel, you have to use the select button here. And that brings up the settings per channel. So that's, that's the super strip. strip. Beneath that, we have the faders. These are down here. Now, unlike an analog desk, where the signal really passes through the fader, on a digital desk, the faders are a little more than just automated controls. This desk has got motorised faders, which means that it, they jump into place as you recall settings. Now, on this desk, there are three layers of, of faders, because there's actually more inputs and more controls than there are actual fa physical faders to do so. The layers are controlled by these buttons over here. So on, def on startup, it'll come up with the lower level. The lower level corresponds to all the mono inputs into the desk. So we have channels 1 to 32. The mono inputs, all of those have got an individual fader attached with them. So that's very similar to an existing analog desk. The upper layer here has got additional faders. These control stereo 1, stereo 2, which are two stereo connections on the back, and then stereo 3, uh, which is actually an uh, iPhone socket right over here uh, by the headphones. Gen this also doubles up as the input if you're playing back off the built-in disc. You then have the effects returns over here. Uh, group masters, which in our configuration we're not using, but they're here. Then have the sends to the effects. The effects are really for slightly more advanced aspects, which I'll cover a bit later. And then you have a duplication of mixes, which are the equivalent of the old auxes. Um, there are a couple of what they call matrixes, which we're not using. And then finally, there are DCAs over here, which we do use. DCAs are effectively a digital volume control that applies on top of all the fader settings for individually on a given channel. However, that looks overly complex. You can also have a custom layer. Now the custom layer is done by pressing down both the layers, both the layer buttons at the same time, and then you come up with common here. Now how we've configured it for our situation is we've configured it so it's very similar to how our existing analog desk was working. So we have uh, our, our mono channels here, so we have mostly the instruments coming through here, uh, which for our standard setting is piano, flute, clarinet, acoustic guitar, keyboard, etc. And then we have our vocal singers across here. And finally, we have our radio mics here. Um, and then over this side of it, I've put the two stereo pairs up onto here. So the first stereo pair where we have a, a switch 
to can put the CD, the PC or the iPod through is on this cha master channel 29. Uh, the video mixer feed comes into here as well. And then finally I bought the two DCAs that we use over here. Now these DCAs are equivalent to how we used to use the groups previously and act as an overriding volume control on the instruments for that one there and then the vocals on that one there. So that enables us to mix the volume level between the vocal group and the instrumental group during a service. It's important that both of those are up because otherwise you won't get any sound out. And finally right on the very edge is the master control here uh, which on default is the, is the master volume on the left and the master volume for the house sound.